Welcome to Azure Lane Meta. Today we are going to be doing a challenge mode guide. Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be doing a challenge mode guide. I know a lot of you guys are waiting for my advanced version of the PVP guide. It is still coming, but I figured I would actually fast track this one because this event for the challenge mode for this season ends on at this week. So um, I just wanted to get this guys out for any of you who wanted to maybe look into it and see if you guys could beat it. So how we get there is through battle. Then here at the bottom of the screen, we go challenge mode. And we come to this challenge mode. Now there are two sections of challenge mode, normal and endless. You will not see this endless until you beat the normal mode. And how you beat it is you get, you defeat all five bosses and you get an event score of 8,800. Now, if you do get a score of 8,800, you do get this frame or portrait. These are what the portraits in the game look like. There are a lot of different ones through different events, but the ones through challenge modes, this is from season one, this is from season two, and this is from the current season three. So uh, you can obtain these and they're basically just meant to flex in the uh, global chat, I guess in the, also your guild chat if you're in that. Oh, I just noticed they actually added this portrait from the next event. It's not here yet. It comes on Thursday, but it's kind of cool that they added it. I actually like the eagle better on this portrait, but the, the lightning is really cool. So other than the portrait that just flexes, mostly this is just a flex as well. We have standings. While I was actually prepping for this video, I accidentally did this. So yeah, that won't stand, but it's kind of funny. Anyway, so we're going to go through here and we're going to see how we can beat them. So there are five bosses. You can check which they are at the beginning. It will determine what armor they have. It also determines their attack patterns. There are so many different bosses though, and they change every week. I'm not going to go through all the different attack patterns uh, this week. So the next six days or so will be this pattern. Uh, I believe the pattern's also based on your starter, so if you have a different starter than me, you will have actually a different pattern. So that's another reason why this is less important to kind of go through the different patterns and just kind of go through this. Now, like EX modes, you're basically just trying to defeat a large boss. You don't have any evasion, so anything but a perfect evasion is useless. Evasion tanks don't work. You need shield tanks or real tanks. Um, they tend to be a little bit more beefy than EX modes, and you have to go through five of them, but they also deal significantly less damage, so it's a lot less about how you can dodge a super strong attack and more how you can build a fleet to, to go the distance. EX mode depends their scoring on basically how weak of a fleet you can beat it with, so you're trying to build as weak of a fleet and then kind of gimp the win. Challenge mode scoring is based on how quickly you can finish the map. So you're trying to get this full offensive like force to just get through it as quickly as possible. Now, endless mode is a little different. Endless mode, no one really plays. There's no score for it. It's just like, oh, how many how many nodes can I beat? It's not just it doesn't end after five. It goes forever. And that one, you're actually not playing for quickly defeating somebody. You're playing for like survivability. So something like a unicorn is like necessary for endless mode, but endless mode, you don't even get to flex your endless mode. So let's go into what fleet I'm going to be using today. Just for any of you who's curious, there are so many different compositions you can use. I know that unicorn is a fan favorite. We're going to try and not use unicorn. I know there are other videos on out there that allow you to auto the uh, section now you won't be able to really get a high score when you're autoing or at least you know a top high score but uh, yeah you can auto this with specific builds of ships as well we're not gonna be doing that today either so for our backline we're just gonna go with our Namagi plus war spite and the reason is I just want to get it killed 
really quickly. Technically, I should be able to put a plane in here so I can clear some of the the shells or some of the attacks from the opponent because that's what airstrikes do. So a centaur or a unicorn would actually be really helpful in in this mode. I'm not going to be doing that today. If you are having problems trying to survive, you know, something like illustrious um, unicorn centaur, those are like very good aircraft or uh, carriers that can help you. So here we got our standard uh, best A HE gun. We have our AP auxiliary gun. We have our Bofor stag for the extra hit stat. We have the white shell because it's the most powerful offensive equipped for a battleship and then we got the black shell for Amagi we got the barrage gun then we have the HE auxiliary PR equipped we also have the the Bofors stag we have the beaver squad so we can move our uh, ships at at the front faster and you know the reason we put it back on Amagi is because the evasion doesn't really work for the front line so it's not really important to put it on a front line ship right now and then also I guess we could put a black shell here but I kind of want to move around because we are going to be playing some bulky cruisers and so giving them the speed boost is kind of important and the white shell as always. War Spite uh, gets kind of the the worst of the shaft here we get the uh, this twin or triple 406 millimeter this is one of the better HE guns for when you're going for barrage hits also uh, she's got the AP barrage and a lot of the opponents I'm looking at look like they're going to be destroyers so that HE is going to be much better than that AP. If you are looking at a set where the AP is better then go for an AP gun. Then we got the standard uh, auxiliary. Auxiliary doesn't really matter and neither does the um, neither does the AA gun. But uh, we go and we add the white shell and then we add the SG radar for basically just more hit stat more than anything. For our front line, we're going to be going with Zara again. A rune is not done. So this is the next best shield tank that we got. We run with our uh, PR gun for AP. It's just what we have for the, the second gun, our auxiliary gun. We have the HE. This kind of gives us some mix. I did see an Amagi in that section, so she is medium armor, so the AP won't be completely dead. Uh, AA gun doesn't matter, and then we're going with auxiliary equips, and we end are uh, with H HP auxiliary equips, and we end up going with an anti-torpedo bulge because we don't want to have to really worry about torpedoes with Zara, because that's the number one way she's going to get slaughtered. Next, we go with Yukikaze. She's going to have the exact same build that we had in my last Torpedo PvP meme fleet because this is literally just kind of her strongest build. And we're going to put her in because she still has this unsinkable ship. So even though she has no evasion, she gets this skill, which is good enough to do like everything that you need. The heal is also pretty useless. She's not definitely, definitely not the best choice out there, but we're just going to use her for this video. And while we are at it, we're going to use the Noshiru from last uh, time. We're switching out the Oxy Torpedo for a more kind of anti-torpedo bulge. Her skill is also like an anti-torpedo bulge. So basically, we're trying to make it so that torpedoes aren't going to make a difference. We can focus on dodging some of the other stuff that aren't torpedoes. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's what we have for our six ships. So challenge modes don't cost any oil, so feel free to try them as many times. If you are not seeing this battle button light up, just make sure you click this uh, refresh button. That will actually help you out. So let's begin. We got heal. We got hood, Amagi, uh, and Z23. Oh, Anami's not in here. I don't think. Javelin. Yeah, okay. So this shouldn't be too bad. Um, let's give it a go. So we... And this is our fleet. Oh yeah, I forgot subs. The you can bring subs. Subs make a big difference in trying to just like completely strike early. My sub team is just the standard SR German subs. They're not leveled up yet uh, because I haven't been very diligent in leveling up my subs. They're actually pretty helpful for challenge modes. And uh, yeah, for their equips, they all have an oxy torpedo plus ten, and they have the the snorkel thing that gives them extra oxygen so they can stay in the battle longer and that's pretty much what they all have so um yeah we gotta level those up but they're still better than nothing at where they at so here we go 
Uh, and we're going to manually do this. This is the setup. Nagato in the middle, Zara in the front, Nishir in the back, Yuki in the middle. Yuki will be the last one alive. Although, I uh, hopefully don't have any of my ships die throughout this whole section. I forgot to mention earlier that uh, there are officers that you can add to your fleet. They do matter. So these are the officers that I used for that clear, just so you guys are aware. So ironically enough, despite mentioning submarines in that last, right before I went into these battles, I forgot to use them the whole time. So this whole run of the challenge mode, I didn't use any submarines and I got to the end I was like huh I thought I was actually doing well but why is my score so low and uh, that's because I didn't use any submarines submarines are not necessary to complete it as this will prove I completed this with all six ships alive at the end but they are necessary to rank for top end scoring because everyone uses subs and so if you're not using subs you're just playing at a disadvantage I was gonna initially going to strike this totally, but I figured some of you might be interested in watching this, you know, without any subs. So I sped it up at four times speed to not waste so much of your time. You guys can see me just run through this, and we'll go through the actual run right when this is done, because, yeah, you know, we want to actually see what the highest score run looks like. And uh, I think in the rest of the video, I'm actually going to refer to torpedoes a lot. And I'm actually referring to submarines. For some reason, I just kept calling them torpedoes, mostly because they probably just all they deal damages in torpedoes. But I don't know. So if I continue to reference torpedoes for the rest of the video, it I, mean, I actually mean submarines. And yeah, I was, I don't know what was going on. I was being very silly. So this is the, the run and we'll actually have the, the full run after this. So stay tuned for that and I'll commentate for that. Have you ever wondered how I get my game footage for Azure Lane? Well, I use my computer and Bluestacks. Bluestacks is a Android emulator for PC, and it allows you to play mobile games like Azure Lane on your computer. If you are interested in an Android emulator, there are referral download links in the description under affiliates. You do have this share function, which basically just shows, oh look, you completed it, and this is the, the team you used. And I just realized that I did this without any torpedoes. So that was the whole EXMO without torpedoes. Should probably go and redo this with torpedoes. What do you guys think? Yeah, let's go redo it with torpedoes. <laughs> I want to actually get a higher score. So this is what I mean. So you reset like this. You just reset and then you, you start the battle over again. And this time we're going to actually use torpedoes because I completely forgot to use my torpedoes. So this should be even easier. So that was with no torpedoes. We'll do it with torpedoes. Yeah, Maggie's early strike is really helpful for this uh, this game mode. <clears throat> All right, there is like no reason not to use your uh, subs too. So, yeah, missing out on that was a uh, really dumb. <laughs> All right, perfect. We got one way around and it's over. Cool. All right, let's, uh, there we go. There's that 2250. Okay. We're going to talk over this. There's a good chance I actually speed. I don't know which one I'm going to show the first run. Cause I like was all prepped for the first run and everything. And then this one is the, uh, redo run because I was a, a dumb dumb and, and didn't use any of my submarines in the first run when I completed it. Oh well, live and learn, I guess. And then we just gotta watch out for this double spiral thing right in the back. We're good. And then Amagi's early thing. Yeah, I don't think there's any heavy armor in any of this. I think it's all just medium and light. Oh, oh. dang it. There we go. 
<clears throat> and that should just about do it. There we go. All right, easy peasy. All right, see, now we're starting to be on schedule with that 2200 there. So I was like, why am I? I thought I was doing well last time, but I was like, nope, not that well. So we'll try and run through this even quicker. You can see the importance of submarines, I guess, in how quickly they can make a difference. Um, just make sure they don't die. If they do die, and they can actually die in this mode, you will not get to use them for the rest of the mode. Uh, so if you are like using them to actually clear something that you otherwise wouldn't be able to clear, make sure to use them a little bit later in the match so that they get to stay underwater the whole time or put a lot of like extra oxygen equips on them so that they can stay underwater longer because as soon as they come out of the water, they are susceptible be to be hit by all this stuff and they don't dodge anything, so they will likely die. So just make sure that you can kill them before or kill the, uh, the boss before they surface and if you can't uh, just make sure you use them only on the last one I guess or just yeah yeah see there we go sitting over the 2200s all the time well we got two more we got a Magi she should get destroyed by this uh, torpedo subs are so interesting because it's like oh we're gonna fire a whole screen full of torpedoes and there's like nothing they can do I don't know. I'm so glad that they're not added to PvP. That would just... I don't even know how that would even function if they were added to PvP. <clears throat> uh, oh, yeah. I should have learned last time. You gotta stay in the middle, not get punished. Here we go. We did it this time. And she's just about done. We'll drop some torpedoes in there. This is not too bad. Through the center. Oh, not even have to worry about the dodging, the back and forth. Barrages, 20... Oop. Let's click. 2250. And, uh, yeah, so this last one, I mean, we got half health everybody. There's no reason not to just, like, go full full aggro here we don't really care if people die that much just trying to go for high score see if we can get back on the leaderboard here because um, I believe that the leaderboard is been updated uh, since I was prepping for this video so I don't think I'm at number one anymore gotta get back up to the top spot That shield is so nice. Zara's shield is so nice. I mean, it's not as nice as runes, but it's it's good enough. And that should do it. There we go. Alrighty. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, see? There we go. We're in the 11s for total points earned, so that's pretty nice. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully that just kind of quells your taste for what you guys need to know about challenge modes. They're kind of just like an end game thing for level 80 players or higher. I actually think you can do them if you're under level 80, and but they're just not recommended. I remember doing my first one at like level 79 and thinking that was weird, but they might have updated that in more recent challenge modes and not allowed people under level 80 to do them. I don't remember exactly how it worked because I'm over level 80 at this point but I am pretty sure that you could actually try them under level 80 at least for the first season they might have patched that error so lucky me because it allowed me to get the uh, portrait challenge mode one because you can do them under level 80 if you have the proper fleets it's not actually impossible to do that you you can actually get them done they're just little fun things for people to do um, once you have all everything done no ex modes 
left to do because there's no event. Maybe there'll be an EX mode in the next event. If you guys want me to do an EX mode for the next event that comes on Thursday, let me know in the comments. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to know more about top end Azure Lane meta things.